there's been somewhat of a step back in D.C.'s coronavirus recovery. The district had been on a downward trend of new cases for several days. Mayor Muriel Bowser said she's looking for a two-week decline, but there was a small spike in cases this weekend, prompting health officials to roll back that clock. But don't worry, they're not starting over. The Department of Health has just reset the city to day 11 based on a scientific model and the most recent peak within a five-day rolling average. So what does that mean? Well, the district needs to see three more days of declining cases as Mayor Bowser looks to possibly begin reopening the city by this coming Friday. Indeed, the beautiful weather this weekend prompted huge crowds at reopened beaches and parks. Look at Ocean City, Maryland. You can see People were out on the beaches and the boardwalk. It was packed. Now, according to Maryland Department of Health data, the state's seven day average for COVID deaths has been on a gradual decline for nearly two weeks now. But the state's new infections have been slightly increasing. And more than half of this weekend's new cases were in Prince George's and Montgomery counties. Yeah, lots of head, lots of folks heading out to the beach, Virginia Beach as well. Another popular spot this weekend. Governor Ralph Northam visited the oceanfront himself to make sure rules were being followed. But get this, he's facing a lot of criticism for doing the exact opposite. Take a look. These are some of the pictures circulating on social media tonight showing Northam without a face mask in public. He's taking selfies and obviously not social distancing. No one is required to wear a mask in these open spaces, but the governor has said repeatedly, if you're going to be in a group setting, wear a mask and keep your distance. This also comes as the governor announced Friday, his administration is working on a policy for statewide mask mandates with an announcement coming this Tuesday. We want to make sure everybody has access uh, to a mask. Uh, we also want to talk about how we enforce that. Uh, but I'll be making that uh, uh, announcement on Tuesday, and especially for individuals that are going into places of business. Okay, so we reached out to the governor's office, and in response to him being seen not practicing what he's preaching, well, a spokesperson emailed us back and said, quote, the governor has repeatedly encouraged wearing face coverings inside or when social distancing is impossible. And not expecting to be within six feet of anyone. This is an important reminder to always have face covering in a situation. We are all learning how to operate in this new normal. Tonight, Alexandria restaurants and businesses could start reopening as early as Friday. And the county health department is launching a program to help them get started. ALX Promise offers a free voluntary certification program to help those businesses put in place higher safety standards for both employees and customers. Now, businesses that complete the program will receive an ALX shield to display on its windows and website. Also new tonight, President Trump added Brazil to the list of countries whose citizens are banned from traveling to the United States. Brazil has the second highest number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in the United States. Now, the president had already banned certain travelers from China, Europe, the United Kingdom, Ireland, and Iran. National Security Advisor Robert O'Brien appeared on CBS Face the Nation this morning. He says while the travel ban is likely temporary, its purpose is to protect Americans from exposure to this virus. I think that we'll have a 212F decision uh, today with respect to Brazil. We did with the UK and, and Europe and China, and we hope that'll be temporary. Uh, but because of the situation in Brazil, we're going to take every step necessary to protect the American people. And we should point out as well, Russia has the world's third highest number of confirmed cases, COVID-19 cases, and so far, President Trump has not moved to ban travel from there. Each year, 240,000 people of color go missing. That's according to the Black and Missing Foundation. 
The organization marked its 12th anniversary today with a day of service to those in need during the COVID-19 pandemic. Members provided 200 D.C. families with food and household supplies. Organizers say they also need your help with their Lives Worth Sharing campaign. It's easy. All you have to do is share the profile of a missing person on your social media page. Organizers hope to raise awareness and $12,000 towards their goal. The foundation offers a free resource for information on missing black people across the nation.